Do you guys want to know my biggest secret to making freezer meals? It's sweatpants. That's what it is. It's really basic. You can make these all right now, throw them in the freezer, and then have them ready for the crock pot for later. Or you can make them right now and throw them in the crock pot and have them ready for dinner. Okay, friends, we are starting with a Texas chili. Now, there's some controversy apparently out there that Texas chili does not have beans. So you don't have to put beans in your chili if you don't want to, but I want you to comment down below and let me know are you one that likes beans in your chili or doesn't like beans in your chili? All right, we've currently got some ground beef that is browning up over on the stove top. You technically don't have to cook it ahead of time. You can just throw it all in the bag raw. It's my preference to cook it ahead of time, but it's completely up to you. This recipe is a little bit mine, a little bit based on what is available in the grocery store right now, and a little bit based on our recipe. So I'm gonna do my best to type that out in the description box. Okay, so this is, we're calling it Texas chili, but if you're from Texas and you don't put beans in it, it's okay. Okay, so we're just writing on our bag like normal, and I'm gonna say to thaw. I'm gonna cook on low for six to eight hours. Again, if you are putting it in later in the day, you can always do high for three to four hours. I like to double bag my chili because we do not want chili all over the freezer. Now, normally I use tomato sauce. I don't know how it is where you guys are, but tomato sauce was like non-existent in the grocery store this week. So we are using fire roasted crushed tomatoes. And I love the fire roasted. I feel like it just adds a hint of flavor that is so good. I'm using one of the big cans, which it's 28 ounces. And I don't want this all over me. Let's add in a can of fire roasted with medium green chili. So you can absolutely just add in a can of Rotel. That's what I would have done if it had been available. But this is a very similar flavor, so it's totally fine to do it this way. And for this one, you don't have to drain it. Um, in fact, the recipe that I kind of just pulled out just so I could give you guys a recipe says to add water. We don't add water to our chili. You absolutely can. I mean, rather than add water, we're just not gonna drain the cans. Obviously, this is a very simple dump and go recipe. You could easily do this without making a freezer meal. Know that ahead of time. It does not have to be that way. I'm choosing to make it a freezer meal because I have the majority of the ingredients right now and they will grow legs. They will literally get up and walk away and then when I'm ready to make this, the ingredients won't be available. So I'm making it while everything is available. Okay, you guys know we don't use onions, but we do use onion powder. So I'm gonna be adding some onion powder. We're gonna add about two teaspoons if I even have that left. That's probably about what I have left. And then we want to add some garlic powder. You can also add minced garlic if that's what you want. We're doing about two teaspoons as well. Oh. See, now if I had made this two weeks from now, all these ingredients would be gone because I didn't remember to reorder. Okay, let's add in some chili powder. Obviously it's chili, we gotta have chili powder. So we're gonna add about one and a half tablespoon. I'm gonna do two tablespoons. We like a lot of chili powder. If that's something that you think, mm, that's a bit much for me, go less, that's totally fine. Okay, we are going to add a can of chili beans. Use whatever kind of chili beans you like. We're gonna add these that I've just picked up at Whole Foods. And these I am not going to drain. Let me check. Uh, let's drain them just a little bit. Now, chili beans have good flavor in them, so you don't want to drain them all the way. I mean, you can, obviously, but I don't like to drain them all the way because they, add, they have that added flavor to them. But these pinto beans, on the other hand, we are going to drain these. So my preference on the pinto beans is more of a drain and a rinse. Okay, so we've got that. Now, like I said, the uh, instructions want you to add water. I never add water to mine, but you absolutely can. You would add about a cup of water or so, even broth, that would be really good because it would add some more flavor. I just don't feel like it's necessary at all. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of salt. A lot of times when we make chili, we also add black beans, and I realize that is not standard at all, but 
It's just adding in some more protein, fiber, stuff like that. All right, this was a very lean ground beef, so I don't have to do anything to it. We're just gonna add it straight into this bag. This is not the way to do it. I mean, you guys know I'm not a professional, but that would have been a little extreme. Just ground beef all over the place. That's what I picture. Some people like their chili a little sweeter. You can absolutely add some brown sugar to this, and that's gonna give it some sweetness. Um, you can add Worcestershire. We've added that plenty of times before. I feel like every time I make chili, it's just a little bit different. Y'all, this is like serving for your neighbors, your neighbor's friends, your neighbor's grandma coming over for dinner. Throw this whole thing in the crock pot. Our favorite way to serve chili is, well, my husband does it a little bit different than I do. I put Fritos on the bottom in the bowl, chili, a little bit of cheese, then some sour cream, and then some green onion or something like that. So delicious that way. My husband adds his Fritos to the top because he thinks they get too soggy on the bottom. Also, one tip, you cannot buy the off-brand Fritos. It just doesn't work with this. We call it Frito mess. It doesn't work with Frito mess. They just, the off-brand gets soggy like that. You have to buy actual Fritos. Okay. So that was a lot to tell you that this is ready to go. I'm gonna double bag it, it's going in the freezer and it's set up and ready to go. One of our favorite recipes to make in the crock pot because it's so incredibly easy is jambalaya. It's got several different ingredients in it, but you can throw it all in a bag, have it in your freezer and have it ready to go. So that's what we're gonna make up really quick. We are going to thaw, we're going to cook for, I'm gonna say four to six hours. Then add shrimp until the shrimp are done. Sometimes it takes 30 minutes, kind of depending on the heat of your crock pot. You know, all crock pots are a little bit different. So the shrimp are not gonna go in this bag. Serve with rice. There are a few things that I do differently as far as jambalaya goes, just because of um, nutritional things that we have in our family. We do want to add chicken breast. I've already cubed up some chicken breast, so we're gonna add that in here. Now, because we're adding some other proteins into this, I only add about one chicken breast. I'm not concerned with having a ton of protein because we are also gonna be adding sausage and shrimp to this. Okay, so I'm gonna add some minced garlic, about a clove or so, maybe two. I usually do about a teaspoon and a half. That's just kind of like our standard amount that we like. You need a tablespoon of Cajun seasoning. Feel free to use something like Old Bay or just Cajun seasoning. This is one that we really enjoy. It's not completely Cajun. It's this seafood seasoning by Auntie Nono's. We really, really do like it. But to add more of like a Cajun or a little bit spice, a little bit of spice, I usually will go in behind that and add a little bit of firecracker sea salt. The sodium is really low on the seafood seasoning, so the firecracker sea salt, the sodium is higher. It's literal salt that's spicy. So I'm gonna add a tablespoon. Actually, I'm gonna add a tablespoon and a half because we really do like that seasoning. And then we're just going to add about maybe a half teaspoon of this firecracker sea salt. So you can always add more at the end if you want more heat. If you're not using the firecracker sea salt though, you wanna add a little bit of salt, maybe three fourths teaspoon to a teaspoon. Now, if you have a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes, you can add that. I have two of the 14 ounce cans, so we're gonna add two of those. And you don't need to drain them. I make my own chicken stock. You don't have to make your own, obviously, but you do wanna add a little bit of stock or broth. It says two cups. I usually go closer to one cup. I'm gonna carefully set this to the side because we still do have some ingredients that are gonna go into it. All right, so I'm gonna add jalapeno. Again, do not feel like you have to do this. We are gonna de-seed it. We have a ton of jalapeno in our garden right now. So I'm taking advantage, making sure that I am using them up, but we are pulling the seeds out just so it's not too spicy. Okay, I'm gonna add these jalapenos in. Again, if you think that they're gonna be too spicy, don't feel like you have to do that. You can just skip out on that. Now we're gonna take a, it's supposed to be a red bell pepper. Technically this is a red bell pepper, but it's taking forever to turn red in the garden, so I just grabbed it. One thing that we really love about this is just that it's served over rice, which makes it feel really hearty. It's already kind of a hearty thing, just with the ingredients that it has in it, but just serving it over rice, it's just, it makes it all even, even better. Okay, so we're just dicing this up. Add all of these peppers. 
standard practice for a jambalaya is kielbasa. However, we can't really eat kielbasa here. Basically, I've, what I've found is that I cannot find a kielbasa that doesn't have nitrates or nitrites, and my son cannot have those. So we always have to go with something like an Italian sausage. I'm not mad about it though, because I love Italian sausage. We are gonna use two of them. You can absolutely use more if you want. But again, since we're also going to be using shrimp and we've already got chicken in there, I am not too concerned about having a ton of the sausage. One thing you can do is go ahead and pre-bag your shrimp in a separate little baggie and toss it in here. How easy is that? So delicious, ready to go. You just toss it into your crock pot. I love a good jambalaya. And then you just make rice on the side. So that is ready to go. I'm com I can double bag, which I always do because again, we don't want a disaster in the freezer. All right, there we go, going in the freezer. You guys, sweet and sour meatballs is a family favorite. Serve it over rice with a nice green side. They're perfect. Uh, you can serve them over mashed potatoes too, but we love them over rice. You don't even have to thaw these, by the way. I would thaw the sauce just a little bit, like leave it out on the counter for like 30 minutes, then throw it in the crock pot, but you really don't even have to thaw it. But cook on low, probably like five to six hours. So let's make up our sauce, okay? We're gonna go with about three-fourths a cup or so of brown sugar. Now, typically, this recipe wants you to use a full cup of brown sugar. The reason I don't do a full cup is because we use coconut aminos instead of soy sauce. Coconut aminos, they're sweeter than soy sauce, so I don't wanna have too much sweetness in this, so that's why we go a little less. We're gonna add about three tablespoons of arrowroot powder. This is basically the same thing as cornstarch. We just use arrowroot instead. So feel free to just use regular cornstarch for this. We're adding about a fourth cup of just regular vinegar. We're going to add about three tablespoons of coconut aminos. And because coconut aminos is a little bit sweeter, like I said, we are gonna add a little bit of salt to this because the soy sauce is what's giving you that salty flavor, but we're missing that, that key element. So I'm gonna add about a teaspoon or so of salt. Now, again, there are so many different ways to go about this. You could add like a nice chili seasoning, um, like a sweet chili seasoning. There's, we've made sweet and sour meatballs so many different ways and not one time have I ever thought they weren't good. I made up my own meatballs. You do not have to do this. You can buy bagged frozen meatballs, but I had ground beef. I had everything to make meatballs. It just made sense to make them. But one thing I like to do is make them up, put them on a flat tray and let them freeze up on the flat tray before you put them in the baggie. And that's going to help them keep their form. Okay. So they've been in the freezer. They're all nice and hard. Now, if you're using a bag of frozen meatballs, they're gonna be that way already. Take the sauce and just pour it all over the top. And make sure that get all that brown sugar. Now these are just gonna go back into the freezer, prepped and ready for us to put these in the crock pot. So easy, so good. Friend, I hope that you enjoyed these crock pot dump and go easy. You can make them freezer meals or you can make them right now for dinner tonight. If you need more inspiration, check out this video right here. You're gonna get even more recipes. You guys are gonna love these. Again, you can put them in the freezer or you can make them tonight. I hope that you guys enjoy them as much as we have. If you're new here, I'd love if you'd subscribe and stick around and I hope you're having a great week. And I splash myself in the face. Okay, so this is all of the ingredients that are like canned or seasoning. So I'm just gonna carefully, ah, not like that. Ooh, that would have been bad, y'all. Guess that would have been kind of fun for you guys to see.